everyone. We are going to be getting started here in just a minute. We're going to let everyone filter in through the wait room and then we'll be getting started here shortly. Welcome everyone. Um, it looks like most people are now in through the wait room so we can go ahead and get started. Um, again, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. My name is Emily Littlejohn and I'm an Associate Director of Alumni Relations here at DePaul. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to quickly review some Zoom procedures and housekeeping notes for tonight's event. First, I'm just going to note that the video and audio of all participants has been turned off just to ensure that we have the best possible audio and video quality for our speakers today. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to submit them using the Q&A feature, which can be found at the bottom of your screen. We'll be saving time towards the end for questions from the audience. Um, and I'm also going to note that we do have live captioning enabled today. You're able to turn these captions on and off and adjust things like the size of the text, other settings by navigating to the transcription button at the bottom of your screen. And finally, I'm going to note that this event will be recorded. Uh, it'll be made available definitely within the next two weeks, if not sooner, um, on the virtual programs and events page of the website. Um, and if you're interested in receiving a copy of the recording, you can also email us at alumnievents at depaul.edu. So without further ado, I'm excited to introduce DePaul's Director of Athletics, Dwayne Peavy. Dwayne Peavy, an admired leader in collegiate athletics, was named Director of Athletics at DePaul on August 24th, 2020. In his 10 months on campus, he has already made a significant impact by leading the athletics department to $1 million raised during the Blue Demon Challenge and the fourth best fundraising year in athletics department history. Dwayne has also inked key external partnerships with JMI Sports, Influencer, and Teamworks, as well as several new campus partnerships and initiatives. The ninth director of athletics in DePaul history leads the department after a 12 year stint at Kentucky that included the last seven years as deputy director of athletics. So without further ado, I will turn it over. Thank you, Emily. It's great to be here tonight with Blue Demon Nation. I love getting opportunities like this to speak directly with each of you, but really, I'm looking forward to meeting everyone in person soon. You know, tonight's webinar was designed to review the past year, provide some more detail around our vision for the future and answer your questions. It's a historic time for DePaul Athletics and I'm excited we're taking this journey together. When I was introduced as Director of Athletics in August, I told you all that I wanted to dream big. And tonight, I hope to show you a transparent view of our plan to turn those dreams into reality. So before we jump into a review of the past year, I wanted to start at the core of what we do. We spent a year and a lot of time reviewing our internal culture lately within athletics. And I'm steadfast on building a culture by design instead of one by default. We spent some time working on a purpose statement for athletics to guide us. And this purpose articulates why we wake up every morning and why DePaul Athletics exists. And it reads, we transform lives and cultivate the leaders of tomorrow through college athletics. I'm gonna repeat that. We transform lives and cultivate the leaders of tomorrow through college athletics. I hope that speaks to you and I hope you see the depth of that statement. We want this to be a transformational experience for our student athletes. And key to that is their education is at the core of what we do. We are first an educational institution. I know that's easy to say, but I hope to continue to show you valuable partnerships with the colleges and programs across our campus. I hope we can utilize athletics national presence to spotlight our university and serve as a front porch for DePaul University. Now I wanna take some time to look back at the past year and what a year it's been. Now let me start off by spotlighting the incredible character and resilience of our student athletes, our coaches and our staff and what they've shown in light of COVID-19 and the effects it had on our department. All 15 sport programs competed in the winter quarter with competition and travel schedules being placed in front of them with only weeks notice. Our athletic training staff stepped up and turned into a makeshift lab to coordinate COVID-19 testing and attestation of all kinds of protocols, national and Big East. It was a complete team effort and I couldn't be prouder. 
You know, externally, we work to engage with you in new and different ways through the virtual Blue Demon Room. I hope you remember that during the basketball season. Fan cutouts, email campaigns, and souvenir tickets. Many of these ideas we hope to keep going in the future. Our diversity, equity, and inclusion committees also made great strides during the past year. We were the first Big East institution to have 100% of its eligible student athletes registered to vote. We also created new internal requirements around diversity training for all our coaches and our staff. And we hosted several virtual educational sessions on DEI topics. So currently we're working with Athlete Ally to ensure we offer a host of LGBTQ resources for student athletes and finding new ways to spear awareness during Pride Month. This past year, we also introduced two new coaches, men's basketball head coach, Tony Stubblefield, and just this week, women's soccer head coach, Michelle O'Brien. Both coaches share our vision for the future of DePaul athletics. And I can't, for, I can't wait for you to see them in action. We didn't stop there. Even though we were mostly working from home, we were able to negotiate and sign new partnerships with several new companies, including Influencer, Teamworks, Fivo, Salesforce, and JMI Sports. Notably, JMI Sports will partner with us to manage all our corporate sponsorships moving forward and apply even more intentional focus on growing our self-generated revenue streams. Speaking of revenue, we reached our Blue Demon Challenge fundraising goal and are currently engaged in the fourth best fundraising year in athletics department history during a pandemic. That's a testament to you. And I plan to put aggressive fundraising goals ahead of us to ensure we're doing our part to invest in our future. We've also been a pioneer in this year, this year in the Big East Conference and across the nation on pending name, image, and likeness legislation with the launch of our new legacy brand development program. I didn't want us to be reactive in this area, knowing that pending legislation would likely go into effect on July 1. I wanted us to have a plan in place to educate student athletes and provide them every opportunity to monetize their brand, should they want that option. We looked no further than the tremendous opportunities available on our campus and built a partnership with the Driehaus College of Business, the College of Communication, and the Coleman Entrepreneur Center to provide industry leading education for student athletes in the areas of financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and brand development. That legislation came to fruition today as I joined Governor Pritzker this afternoon in Champaign as he signed SB 2338, allowing student athletes to have the same rights as the general student body to profit off the use of their name, image, and likeness. As regulations around the student athlete experience modernize, we will always take a student athlete's uh, first approach. Now, however, the work I've enjoyed the most part this past year lies in the conversations I've had with so many DePaul ambassadors and the relationship I've been able to build with many of you. You are central to our future. It takes every one of us. And I really enjoy hearing your feedback as a platform for us to continue to grow and improve. We engage in an extensive survey of more than 15 stakeholder groups from faculty, staff, to student athletes and alumni to learn what was important to you and how DePaul Athletics could grow to better support our university missions and Vincentian values. The result of that survey was the five-year strategic plan that I will walk you through this afternoon. It speaks to who we are, how we operate, and where we want to be in the future. Specifically, it shows how we will get there and provides accountability to those goals. I met with a small group of athletic staff, our senior leadership, a couple of weeks ago, and went trust arena to walk through this plan. I asked them to challenge the status quo, commit to innovation, and ultimately recommit to DePaul. I also share with them my personal commitment. I commit to our vicentient values and education being a priority. I commit to focusing on all 15 sports succeeding at a high level. I commit to always dreaming big and being passionate about innovation and collaboration. I commit to making the tough individual decisions for the sake of the entire athletics department and our university. And I commit to selling out Wintrust Arena. 
The future is bright for us, and I can't wait to see what we will achieve. So now I want to walk you through our five-year strategic plan. Well, Dwayne, thank you so much for the recap. Um, I'm just going to give a quick reminder here that if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to submit them using the Q&A feature. Um, and we're going to get the PowerPoint pulled up here in just a minute. So yeah, if, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them using the Q&A feature. Thank you, Emily. Make sure you get those questions in because when we finish up, I'm going to make sure I have time to answer as many questions as I can from Blue Demon Nation. The first question you might ask yourself is, why do we even develop a strategic plan? And I wouldn't be a leader if I didn't design something to make sure that we have a focus a direction, intentionality, and to knowing what direction that we're going in uh, and to, to drive and focus all our units through one path. The transparency that we need to allow Blue Demon Nation, our campus, um, our, our partners, our fans, our alumni, to know exactly what we're doing and, and, and what drives us every day. Also goal setting and the accountability that comes with that and also to provide benchmarks and to prioritize our needs. And that's some of the things that we'll get out of your strategic plan. What's included in this? Our vision, our purpose, our core values, they define who we are. Our operating principles is how we operate, how we go about our daily business. Competitive advantage, what makes us succeed here at DePaul in our strategic priorities, where we will focus our efforts going forward. The competitive advantage we have here, just like any coach of a team, we have to know what makes us succeed and we've identified what makes the Paul Athletics special. And some of those things that we've got in serving some of you, and I thank you for that because being here 10 months, I can't assume that I know everything about DePaul. I needed help from everyone. And one of the things that we really boil down to these three areas, people, passion and purpose. And those are the things that we will use as our competitive advantage going forward. Our values, you know, we talked about before, as I read to you our purpose um, in, I, earlier, that, that we transform lives and cultivate the leaders of tomorrow through college athletics. Do you understand the level that, that means? That's a bigger purpose than just winning basketball games or selling tickets or selling merchandise. We want everybody in this department, whether your staff, student athletes, coaches, administrators, to understand why we exist. What is our purpose on this campus? What is our purpose in this community? What is our purpose in this city? We transform lives. So our values, these are the things that help form our culture. When you really think about, these are, these are the bones inside of you, the things that don't go away. You know, integrity, we always have to have that. That's have to be the value of what we are. Diversity, excellence, students first, winning, stewardship. Those are the things that we rely on every day to be the core of who we are. You know, our Vincentian professionalism is a big part of how we, how we go about our business and who we are defines that. Now you've heard a lot about our vision. And if you've been on Blue Demon, the Blue Demon Room throughout the basketball season, you've talked, you've heard us talk about our five guided principles that goes along with it. But this is what we aspire to be. Our vision for DePaul Athletics is to build a championship culture and become the premier program in the Big East Conference by implementing five guiding principles of success. And as a result of this championship culture, we'll win championships with integrity, build champion students through education and intentional development, and continue to be an ambassador for DePaul University and the Chicago community. Now, those are not just words on the paper. That is what drives us. It's in our building, 
Our student athletes, staff, and coaches will see it every day. And those things are built to give us accountability and the transparency that we have to have in place to accomplish our goals. And so let's talk about the five guiding principles of success. One is our academic excellence, and we'll go into detail about each one of these. Two is our building the DePaul brand. C, championship experiences. D is developing and equipping future leaders. And E is external outreach. We call these the ABCs of DePaul athletics around here. So hopefully you can remember those as we go through them. So A is academic excellence. As we elevate academic excellence, it's gotta be a focus something that we're proud of. We have that reputation now, and we don't take that lightly. The only way to maintain what your success level is to strive for more. We wanna be better than ordinary. We wanna be better than just the status quo. And that is something that even when I looked into this job last summer, I took pride in our academic excellence. Once again, we are, we are setting records in our GPAs, we are striving toward the goals that we put in place, and we will continue to excel in those academic areas. One of the things I wanted to mention is that, you know, one of our goals is to have a 3.0 grade at point average every year and have a 3.5 overall GPA. We accomplished that every quarter this year and for the full, full school year. Every team had a 3.0 grade point average and we had a 3-5 overall throughout this school year. That's got to be a goal that continues for us to strive at this level going forward as well, along the pathway as we become even better competitively on the court, on the field, um, in the arenas. Building the DePaul brand. This is what I call really establishing ourselves as Chicago's team. It's waiting for us. How do we become a destination place for coaches? How do we become where staff members want to come here to train to be an athletic director one day or a senior administrator? Assistant coaches want to become part of our staff to be a head coach. We've had two head coaching hires, both assistant coaches. It can happen here. How can it be a destination place for athletic directors? This can't be a stepping stone job if we're building a DePaul brand to resonate to what really becomes Chicago's team. We also have to align our resources with those expectations. And that means doing our part, the stewardship, fundraising creatively, to the point when you see the DePaul brand, the logo that's you know, on my chest, behind me, that when you see that, that means something. It means professionalism. You're immersed in the fan experience. You have, and when I go to the games, it's a great time. I wanna see it everywhere because people are proud to wear our logo. Those are the things that go along with, with building the DePaul brand. So we have to create that environment. You know, we wanna make it a household name. There's an opportunity as the front porch of this university, which is athletics. And what I mean by that, if you're going by a house and the front porch looks all raggedy, are you stopping to go in? No. But if it's pristine and it draws your attention and it looks immaculate, you might step into the front door to see what the rest of the house looks like. That's our job in athletics is the front porch, to give people an opportunity or a reason to look at what else our university has to offer. We have unbelievable colleges and programs, deans and faculty, but we've got to do our part in athletics to be that front porch that leads people, prospective students, faculty, staff, coaches, to check out what's going on here at DePaul University. Championship experience. This might be if you're thinking about, you know, are we gonna win enough games? This is where your focus should be. The championship experience will be the opportunities we have to focus on how do we perform better in our sports? You know, how do we consistently win championships? What's the goals and the roles that we have along the way? We want to be a top 100 program according to the NACTA Director's Cup. And what that means is we've got to start making the NCAA tournament because that's the only way you can score points. I think the top 100 is a speed bump to where we need to go. 
But we need all 15 sports to contribute to that to start talking about those director cup standings. You know, this year, men's tennis uh, won the Big East championship and went to the NCAA tournament for the first time and scored points in the director's cup. Those are the type of things that need to be happening on a regular basis where making the tournament no longer becomes your ceiling, but is now the floor where all 10 of the head coaches are expected to make postseason. And we're talking about how we're advancing in the NCAA tournament versus just making it. Those are the things that we will put in place continually to help us win. Developing and equipping our future leaders. I think a lot of it has to do with, this is probably the most important subject that's going on more since last summer. The cause of diversity and inclusive efforts, you know, the name image likeness and teaching our young people how to be able to handle this entrepreneurship and branding opportunities. Our partnerships with the Driehaus College of Business, um, along with um, the College of Communication, those are the things that we have to equip them to be the type of leaders for tomorrow. You know, we've, we've done our build certificate, uh, build diversity certificate for our staff and our coaches. This doesn't just mean student athlete development. This also means for our staff. This means it for the athletic director. How do, we, how do I get better where in year three or year five, I'm a better version than year one? You know, how do we help, as I said before, those coaches, those assistant coaches become better and want to be a head coach someday? Some of the things we've seen take charge already is the head coaches are starting to get together monthly as a group to share ideas as head coaches. Those are the things that are get us going in the right direction. We, we, we are investing in compliance and leadership intentionally. We have to make sure that we are able to be compliant at the highest level because when we start winning games, the wind blows the hardest at the top. And so we need to be able to show that we are very diligent and organized in how we do our business, but very intentional about our student, staff, and coaches' leadership going forward. And last but not least is our external outreach. Examples of like today, we need to talk to you. We need to learn what you need and what you want. We need to be intentional about our fundraising. We need to be out in our city, out in our community, forming partnerships with our alums and our, our, our faculty, our staff on campus. I can't wait to meet every dean on campus and I'm working down the list. And if you're on here today, I'll be scheduling something soon. Part of that is one of the things that I talked about from day one is having a dream team program. And that's basically an inclusive, very high level for donors that are gonna be the foundation of where we go. But it takes everyone. Everyone has a role, just like any successful team. The culture has to be great. You have to have specialists. You have to have the person you go to for in the winning moments and, and, and and game winning shots, so to speak, or you want them at the plate with the game on the line. That's the same role that we have to play with some of our external constituents, our alums, our fans, our season ticket holders, our supporters, our donors, but also our campus faculty and staff and leadership. We have to be able to increase our season ticket sales. We have to have more so called butts and seats at all of our events and be able to have an unbelievable environment for our young people going forward. And that takes hard work, dedication, it takes planning, it takes accountability, but it also takes you. And I'm looking forward to having more webinars, town hall meetings, getting the caravans, you name it, to get our groups together. Our alums wanna see each other more just as much as they wanna come back to see us. How can we help with that? We'll be more intentional about our alumni relations and affairs going forward, because those things are so important to our growth. The new technologies we put in place based on some of the donations we've already received, changing the look and feel of our offices because of the monies that we received from supporters, those are game-changing things for the Blue Demon community. And I can't wait to have more opportunities to touch all the things that connect to our young people. So in recap, the ABCs are academic excellence, building a DePaul brand, championship experience, developing and equipping future leaders in our external outreach.
Now it's time for questions. Great. Well, thank you so much. There's certainly a lot to be excited about with DePaul Athletics. Um, you've mentioned jumping into questions. Um, okay. I also just want to give a quick reminder as well. If you have questions, again, you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen to submit them. Um, but jumping in, you've talked a few times about uh, JMI Sports. Can you speak to what role they'll play moving forward? Well, JMI Sports is a multimedia rights partnership that we uh, engaged in, and we're in the uh, opportunity right now where we're hiring a staff that we'll work with every day. And what that's going to give us an opportunity is to, especially in this name, image, likeness era, to be more engaged and just really revamp our corporate sponsorship program. Um, and so what it will do for us is get an opportunity for, we don't have a lot of, you don't see our coaches out in commercials. You don't see our coaches uh, doing advertisements. Um, what are our partnerships, our corporate partnerships? We want them to have more value of the current ones we have and the new ones we bring on. We'd like to see them throughout this community. We are in the third largest media market in the country. And I want to see DePaul everywhere. That doesn't mean we're a minor league baseball program where you've got signs just all, littered all over the place. But what those relationships mean to show is that we are imprinted into our community, both locally, regionally, and hopefully nationally. And what JMI, they're one of the leaders in this. I work with them directly at Kentucky. Uh, they understand this footprint. And it's going to give us a chance to be more dynamic on game days, whether that's here in Lincoln Park or out at Wintrust um, to be able to engage more with our fans, be co more connected to our community. And it gives us unbelievable opportunities to be able to give back to Chicago with whether that's camps, clinics, uh, other community service elements that we can do in the corporate world as well. Awesome, well, thank you. Um, for our next question, so we brought Billy Blue Demon back, or you guys brought Billy Blue Demon back after Blue Demon Challenge. Do you intend to bring Billy Blue Demon back in any other ways this year? And is there a possibility that there might be any more merchandise? That's a good question. Uh, definitely there are big plans for Billy Blue Demon. It's not, it's not gonna be just a short stint. Um, what I've heard uh, from Blue Demon Nation, because you can hardly even buy anything left right now, I think maybe a hat and a small t-shirt, is that you need more. And so we're talking to some of our partners along with, uh, along with Nike. Our student athletes love it, you know, our coaches do too, but we wanna incorporate that classic logo of Billy Blue Demon into what we do every day. And so there are gonna be some great opportunities. Um, obviously there'll be some things that are tied to what we do as far as season tickets and our fans. Um, and, and you won't, you will definitely be seeing Billy Blue Demon more. And that's something that, you know, we have to embrace our past and we want people to fear our future. And so one of the great assets we have in this program is where we were when Billy Blue Demon was a part of us. And so we don't want to lose that. And I think that's a huge asset. And there's a lot of fans that that brings an affinity and it brings some great memories. And we want to start realizing those even more. And so I'm excited. I'm anxious, to, I'm anxious to see what other ideas you guys have is how we can use Billy Blue Demon as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, for our next question, um, are you planning any enhancements to engage students? Yes, um, I think that's going to be a big major focus for us. And that's the one thing that the pandemic kind of gave us a little more time to really dial into. Um, without having fans at our sporting events this year, uh, we have had a lot of conversations about what, what we've done in the past, what's worked, what has not worked. But obviously this year, this, this past school year's freshman class didn't really get to go to any of the events. Now we have a new freshman class that's the largest in school history coming in and they haven't had a chance. So we're really gonna have really our freshman and sophomore class a chance to really educate and for the first time here, how do you support your blue demons? But we also have our upperclassmen, so to speak, that are looking for something new, are looking for a challenge. And what we've done, not only did have we surveyed and talked to our you know, SGA leadership, but we also 
engage with one of our marketing classes this spring quarter as a study to really take all quarter to, to come up with answers and solutions for how we can better engage in, in athletics and particularly with students. And so that's one of the decks that I shared with our new partnership with JMI Sports because there's some great ideas how we can engage more with our students. Uh, we're looking into more digital ticketing options and things that are available on your phone or ease of use to be able to help not just with our students, but all our fans. Because if you're going to any sporting events now, it's becoming something more what's in your hand versus me. Um, just the option is only a printed ticket that maybe you got to pick up at the arena. And so I can't wait. We're planning some big bashes. So we're going to have some fun. We're going to kick this school year off right. And we'll start first with our students. Awesome. Um, and on the note of the arena, um, will women's basketball move all of their games to Trust Arena this year? Yes, we were able to announce that um, late spring. Um, all our women's basketball games will be at Trust Arena going forward, just like our men. When we built Trust Arena, it was built for both. Uh, if you've been through it, locker room spaces, uh, just dedicated space for our women's basketball team as well as our men's team. Now, I'm not eliminating the option that we might play a game in either, for either men or women at McGrath Phillips, you know, from, you know, from a classic game or maybe there's a blue red scrimmage that we do. Um, but our home for men and women's basketball will be Win Trust Arena going forward. I'm excited about it. I've talked to prospective student athletes that have come through in both men and women's basketball and the women's basketball recruits. They love the idea of being out at Win Trust. And I think last year during the COVID 19, we moved games to Wintrust just for more safety precautions, you know, a larger footprint just so we can have enough people to put the game on. And I think for our student athletes, they want to be on the biggest stage. And Wintrust Arena is an unbelievable venue. Uh, I know this week we had the NBA Combine there and G League uh, draft prep and all that. And all I heard all week was from NBA general managers and decision makers of how great an arena we had. And and so why not share it with every sport that can play there? And so we're going to start with women's basketball, investing in them playing at Wintrust Arena going forward. Definitely. It, it certainly is a beautiful arena. Um, for our next question, I know you were down in Champaign earlier today. Can you talk about the NIL bill that was signed today by the governor and what stance will DePaul take on it? Uh, it was an exciting day and I was glad to be there. I actually have a, a pin from the governor, one of the ones that helped sign the bill that we got as a memento for being there today. And it was an exciting day for, for all the state of Illinois student athletes, in particular DePaul, you know, and being the lar you know, third largest media market in the country in Chicago. And one of the things that I even said in my comments is when we were dreaming big here, that was one of the assets that we wanted to be able to use is being in Chicago. What could that mean for our students? And now with this bill, you know, our student athletes, along with every other student on campus, can receive compensation off their name, image, or likeness, whereas this bill actually specifically mentions uh, voice as well. And what that'll mean for us, you know, it's not just a recruiting aspect. I mean, you think about that from recruiting any prospective students on campus, whether it's student athletes or not. You, you talk about the environment, you know, what helps you in the professional world. And being in Chicago is a very good connection piece. But the things that you do along the way in your college experience are important too, from a recruitment standpoint or in actuality. So that's why we partnered with, you know, the College of Communication and, and the Driehaus College of Business uh, because we, in the Entrepreneur Center, because we want to be able to educate our young people, have those trial and errors, and errors while you're in college. Versus what we tried before, we tried to educate them. And then they go out to the real world and you got real life experiences that no matter how much we simulate while we're here, there's still some stumbles that might be of a larger amount than maybe what they could be doing in college. So I love the fact that we're, we're there with them when they might make a misstep. We're putting things in place to help them have tools in their hands to be better at it. It's like learning how to play the stock market you know, or anything else that you learn while you're in school versus doing it at your job, your livelihood. And so I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. 
I remember we were having those um, 7 a.m. calls with all the ADs uh, in the state of Illinois talking about different legislative things. And, you know, one of my first questions was, what are we doing about name, image, likeness, and how do we feel about it? Because that was something that I didn't see Illinois had figured out. And so it was a great day to be down there with, you know, Illinois AD Josh Whitman and uh, Northwestern's AD Derek Gregg as representatives of the athletic directors in the state of Illinois. But it was a great day for students across the board, which includes our student athletes. And I can't wait to see what our young people do with it. You know, we might have, you hear a lot about what everybody thinks, you know, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. We're putting it in the hands of some dynamic people that we're going to trust our future to. Let's, let's help guide them and see how this goes along the way before we pass judgment. And I think it's going to be a, a, a day that we look back in college athletics and the history of what it means going forward. I'm new to this. This is my first year. I'm 10 months in. I'm, I'm all in. So I want to see where this goes. And I'm excited about it. We signed a multimedia right partnership in the middle of the name image likeness uh, bill taking place. We, I don't think it's gonna impact the poll negatively. I think it's a huge asset for what we're trying to accomplish across the board. And I'm excited for what it means for everybody. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, switching gears a little bit here to fundraising, which I know you spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, when do you envision that new donor level will be released for anyone who might be ready to commit their support? Um, and are there any high level insights that you might be able to give us today? Well, we're hoping that as we get ready for season ticket sales um, to start um, releasing those donor levels, we've had some conversation with people already. So there might be some people even on this call today that they know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm always going to keep it, you know, to a point where you know exactly where I'm coming from. And um, you know, we have huge goals. We have big dreams. And we want, if we we're going to be the best in the Big East, that doesn't mean settling. And we have to take steps along the way. We can't get there tomorrow. But that takes the relationship building before you can get to the point where you just hand over fist people are just delivering you um, their, their fortunes. And, but I understand that. And there are a lot of people that are connected directly to the Paul. And I'm not just talking about just our alums but our fans and supporters that, you know, that have, have bled with us, sweat and tears. Every time I talk to them, I can feel that passion when they talk about the past or even talk about our recent, recent past or our future. They feel it. And that was one of the things that early on when I got here, I thought I'd have to convince people to dream big, but I found out pretty quickly that you're already doing it. You just needed somebody to yell and scream at to everybody else that we're, we're dreaming that way. That's what we're all about here, DePaul. But I think part of it is we wanna, we're gonna add a second row of courtside seating at Wintrust Arena this season um, because we have a lot of demand from people right now that wanna know, hey, how do I get a courtside seat? I'm ready, to, I'm ready to jump in and be all in with Coach Stubblefield and Coach Bruno out at Wintrust. Um, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're looking at revamping some of our premium and what we're delivering. And we're having meetings about that right after the 4th of July to finalize so we can get that out to our folks. Because we have an unbelievable opportunity here to build a foundation of what our future is gonna look like. You know, and I hear from a lot of people, whether that's social media, uh, emails, letters, and they want us to succeed so much. And everybody asks, what can I do? And for one person that might be, you know, uh, a six or seven figure donation. For another person that might be, I'm gonna invest in season tickets. And another person, it might be, hey, I'm gonna buy more season tickets or I'm gonna to donate to you know, one of our coaches funds to help in a particular sport that I have a love for. There's enough for everybody to have a role in where we're gonna go. But this is the ground floor. And I can't wait to celebrate with our season ticket holders that are renewing, the ones that have never let go, the ones that have stuck with us through thick and thin. How do we reward you when you renew for this new season? And then the rest of you, whether you let go before, I know you're still a hardcore fan. I've been there too. I'm a fan too. And I understand that times have been hard and we haven't delivered enough to maybe win you all back, but we'll get there. And so I'm excited about, that's the opportunity. This is the time to commit to us. This is the time to jump back in 
this is the time to say, hey, I was there in 21, 22, when we got the things back rolling across the board. And I'm not just talking about men's basketball. We're going to bust out of this pandemic like something you've never seen before. And our 10 head coaches are so excited. You know, our staff, we came out of a two-day retreat. We haven't even been together before in person until that retreat. We came out of that retreat where everybody was committing to, the, to things, not just me, but everybody was committing to what they're going to do for DePaul Athletics and our university to get things back on track. And I think those are the things they're getting excited for. And so staying, stay tuned in July, you'll be, you'll be getting a lot of information from us. Awesome. Well, I know I'm certainly really excited. Um, for our next question, this person wrote in and said the website upgrade has been nice. Um, and that you mentioned in the PowerPoint that there was an app or an official app that is going to be released. Do you have any sense of the timeline for that? Yeah, that's another off-season project. So definitely in time before we start our seasons, because we wanted to be readily available and easy. And uh, we hope to have everything we can on the app, where you want to listen to a broadcast, um, you want to connect with a partnership, uh, you want to buy season tickets, you want to follow the website. We want to get it to the point. We just had a meeting last week, I mean, earlier this week, actually, about being able to order from your seat when you're in Wintrust on that same app. So we're thinking about everything possible that we can deliver in the hands of Blue Demon Nation to make experience unbelievable. We want you to come in and realize like, I'm going to meet my friends at Wintrust. That's why I'm going. When I go out to Wishfield, Cajetory Stadium, I'm excited about seeing all the people that I saw the last game and have no worries and know you have everything taken care of. And those are the things that we're trying to get to do a better job. Um, we had, you know, so from an app standpoint, it was, it was something that we needed. And our new partner in JMI Sports, they're excited about it too, because that's something that they can get more involved into where corporate sponsorships might want to have giveaways and different gaming opportunities. How can we interact with our fans, not just from order from your seat, but in-game entertainment or gaming and things that you can do within the game environment. Those are things that the app will allow us to do. It's very interesting that we've talked to a lot of partners about things that we can do once we have an app. So now we have to get these tools like an app and digital ticketing on board so we can really start having some fun. And so I'm looking forward to it. Um, like I said, I'm a fan too. And I love going to different events and I plan on hitting as many things in Chicago I can just to see how other people do it. And the greatest thing about sports is we're a connected industry and everybody sent all kinds of invites. Yeah, come check our things out, back a house, see how we do things. You know, we might have DePaul days everywhere around this city. You know, because we're trying to be connected with one another and um, we want to be Chicago's team. So that means we got to be out and about and we need a way for people to connect with us. Definitely. Well, sort of following up on the experience at Wintrust, are you expecting to have 100 percent capacity at Wintrust this year or is it still a little bit too early to know? We're expecting to. We're expecting to have 100 percent capacity. Um, we're now to a point where, you know, the Chicago Sky's playing at Wintrust now. Um, you know, obviously the teams are in town. They're all at 100% capacity, and we're not looking back. I mean, I think the things that we've got to be as a nation, we're trying to do our part. You know, Chicago has stepped up. And so we, we're expecting 100% capacity. Now it's our job to feel that 100%. You know, it doesn't do us any good if we're 100% capacity and we've got 25% of the seats sold. So how do we do our part? Take advantage of it. No more excuses. You know, I went to a bunch of games in Wintrust last year and I could high five everybody in the building. You know, because nobody was allowed. Now, with no restrictions, what does that look like? And I'm excited. Uh, if you think about it from Wintrust standpoint, the season starts November 9th, I believe, is the first day that you can play in men and women's basketball and we'll be ready to roll. Um, the women will start on November 9th and the men will start on November 10th. Each one will have their own opening night. And I'm excited about it. I know that's a, a news drop for a lot of people right there, but that's the start. And that's when we'll get to see, um, you know, our, our Blue Demon family once again. And I'm excited about it. But there'll be a chance. We'll be announcing scheduling before. There'll be exit. You know, I think we're playing at least an exhibition game on both sides as well. And so there'll be opportunity to learn a lore. Uh, we're going to be very intentional about learning more about our student athletes in this summertime, you know, in this off season. 
So by the time we get to November in basketball, by the time we get to let August, September for our fall sports of, you know, both men and women's soccer and volleyball, you know a little bit about our people, you know, because you kind of missed a little bit of them last year because you didn't maybe get to come to the games. You know, you kind of missed on last year's freshman class. You might not know as much about them. And, you know, obviously you've got some new faces in all our sports. And so I'm looking forward to it. It just, I don't know if you could tell my excitement, Emily, but I can't wait to be around people. I miss people. And, and that's the thing that's so rewarding now. I felt like I just started a job in May because I could get out and see people. And so there was a lot of Zoom conversations that I get to follow up with the actual coffee or lunch or dinner with people now. Um, and I'm excited about that and looking forward to it. Yeah, I can definitely feel your excitement. I have to say, I'm also so pumped hearing all these plans and, um, and ready for sports back, back at Paul and, um, and in Chicago, um, similar, kind of similar note. So for alumni that aren't able to make it back to campus, are there any plans to do engaging activities on road trips at any point this year? Yes, I think that's one of the things that we have to continue to be intentional about. I can't speak to what was done in the past because obviously we didn't do that last year. Uh, but I was just talking to uh, our actual um, men and women's coaching staff, uh, maybe an hour before this webinar, uh, just giving them updates on what happened in Champaign. And we start talking about, I'm looking forward to going to all our big East cities, you know, this year. I didn't get a chance to do that last year. And um, we have different places where we, you know, I'm assuming like right now we play at every place twice a year, you know, you know, and then think about all our sports, you know, we're, we're in a lot of round robin schedules, especially in men and women's basketball. And so I'm used to seeing that dynamic. And I'm hoping that for every place we don't have a DePaul alumni spot, we're going to start creating them. We need a bunch of them here in town first. That's what I want to see when I go to places. I want to see DePaul flags. And I've already told my staff, we better be ordering a bunch of DePaul flags. And I'm going to start walking around these neighborhoods and every bar or sports bar, any place that's got a TV better be flying a DePaul flag too. But the other thing is, once we go to these other big East cities, we need to have a place where our folks know to come. Or when we're playing at home and people want to get with other DePaul fans, because we're everywhere. Don't sell us short. Don't assume that, that we're small. Because I'm hearing from people and we've got donations from every state, you know, when we did that in the Blue Demon Challenge. And so up in these big East cities, especially, we need to establish places that if we haven't had them already. But that's something we want to be intentional about. Uh, I think the Blue Demon Room was one of the things virtually we did to, to accomplish those same type of things. Um, and we're talking about how do we take that Blue Demon Room on the road, you know, and it might not be virtual this time. It might be something where people can get together where when we're at home, and then maybe it's something when we're on the road for people to get together um, um, as well if they can't be there in person too. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, for our next question, what has been the best surprise since you arrived at DePaul um, and started as the director of athletics? Hmm, that's a good one. I, I would probably say the biggest surprise has been you know, I'm, you know, coming into this new, in a pandemic, um, I had, you have your dreams and aspirations about how your first day is going to be, you know, and, and how your press conference is going to be. And, and those didn't go <laughs> kind of as planned because nobody could really be there. Um, but so you take that dynamic and you start thinking that's what your first year is going to be like, that you're not going to get to engage with a lot of people. But I think what I found out is that you know, maybe it was because it had been so long since March is that people were so welcoming, not just to me, I expected that, but to be an open minded to change and different ideas and innovation and uh, not just my staff, because they probably feel like, you know, maybe I'm getting a different sense because they might be telling me what I need to hear, but other campus partners were willing to listen. And I think part of that is maybe who I am as a person too, wanting to be a servant leader. I tried to approach it with my campus partners about what can we do for you first? And I think, you know, maybe that helped with engaging with other people because we're trying to come together, you know, as a Blue Demon family to help each other grow. But I didn't expect to feel at this point, 10 months in, 
as connected to the campus as I, as I, as I do right now, especially without being a chance to visit with people and, and be face to face with others. And so it's an infectious thing. And so now throughout the summer, I want more of that. And so I want to use this time before it gets, before it gets really busy for our deans and some of our faculty, if they have time, I want to visit now because this is what I call idea season. I got that from John Calipari. It was kind of sometimes a nightmare part of the year because he's got time to think. Now that I'm in this chair and I'm in a leadership role, I get that now because now I'm gassed up. I'm, I'm, I'm full of energy. I've had a little bit of break and now I'm in the idea season. So my staff, they might want to look out because they're, they might be winding down, but I'm gearing up. And so I'm thinking about, okay, what do we need to do this summer to get ready for the new school year? Because this is my first off season, so to speak. You know, I didn't have that last year. I started on September 1, and my last day at Kentucky was like August 30th. So I didn't have a time period. So now, after this holiday, it's on. We're going to be trying to – we're going to be dream makers and uh, reality fillers every day. What can we do? How do we bridge those gaps? Who can we go see? You know, and, and what relationships can we form? And who can we talk to? And I'm looking forward to going out there and seeing our fans – and people connect in this community. I want to, I, I live in Lincoln Park right now. And I, I want to be connected more to our community here, right here in Lincoln Park where our offices is. So I'm going to start on my street. And the goal is before school starts, I want to meet everybody on my block. And then we'll start tackling the other ones as we go along. And so uh, it's a lot, but that's just my mentality of it. But that's really been the surprise is how welcoming people are to talking about change, not change in me or this position, but talking about change of the way we have done things on campus, people are more receptive to that than I ever thought they would be. Yeah, well, I am all close to a neighbor in Lakeview, so hopefully I'll, <laughs> I'll see you at some point this week. <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier in the presentation that there was a new women's soccer coach who was hired. Can you maybe talk a little bit more about that? Yes, it's great. So. Obviously, you don't plan on hiring a coach in the end of June, but, you know, Erin Chastain had an opportunity to go back to her alma mater, which is her dream school at the University of Minnesota, where Mark Coles, the athletic director, was my supervisor at Kentucky. Um, and I knew once she was a candidate that she was going to be the next coach there. And but fortunately for us, Michelle O'Brien was on our staff as an associate head coach, but I wasn't willing to just elevate her. Uh, I really wanted to do a national search and have a chance to see what's the, what's the biggest step we can make for women's soccer here at DePaul. And what I found out, we had Michelle right here. There was no doubt. And she's dynamic. Um, she's hardworking. I talked to so many uh, alums and people connected. I don't even know if Michelle remembers this, but, you know, we had our um, kind of a mental break from COVID-19 uh, I think the quarantine break and Michelle signed up for the time I was out there just so we could meet for the first time. Because at that time I hadn't met every assistant coach. And I remember that. But just the initiative to even do something like that with nothing on the table meant a lot to me. And I got a chance to visit with her kids, you know, and, you know, it just, it meant a lot to me to have that kind of initiative. But she's such a hard worker. Um, she's been able to balance the demands of, fitness, nutrition, and training, because she was a professional um, with, with the caring and understanding of being in an associate head coach role to understand that you've got to have, um, you got to sometimes be that nurturing person to help them get through how the coach is communicating. And those will be great assets for her going forward. I, the one thing I did wrong when we announced her on Monday, we actually had a Zoom, team Zoom with her team. And it was for me to give an update on the coaching search and they had no idea and she was off the screen and they didn't know she was going there. And I talked about the timeline. I told her it'd take two weeks and it was a little longer. And I got a chance to avail them the new coach for DePaul women's soccer. And then Michelle comes on the screen and they're all excited, you know. And, but the one thing I left out, me, the new, you know, is forgetting to wish her happy birthday. So happy belated birthday, Michelle. Her birthday was on the day that we announced um, her as the new head coach for DePaul women's soccer. And uh, I'm excited about it. I mean, she had 65 caps playing for the Irish national team. She's, she's that dynamic of a player. 
overcoming all kinds of adversity. We're going to do a feature story on her to understand what she's gone through just to get to this point. Um, but I think we're in great hands going forward. And she's really, really ready to dream big about where we can go with our women's soccer program. That's an awesome story and, and an awesome birthday for sure. <laughs> Good way to ring it in. Um, for our next question, any plans to do arena tours or open practices this fall to engage fans and um, get to meet new staff and players? See, I, I like these questions because they think like me. I've already brought that up. We definitely got to have that opportunity. And like I talked to you before, we might have a big bash for students. All our fans, we're going to have a chance to do something special this year. And we've got to get started and be connected with one another. That first time to go back in Wintrust Arena after you haven't been in a long time, it's got to be different. And so we've got to have a chance to introduce some of the new things that we have in place. And we'll unveil those things pretty soon in the off season. You know, our marketing staff is geared up and we're wiping the slate clean. And we re we're rebuilding what our game days are. And hey, there'll be a lot of things that we've done well in the past that will continue, but there's room to grow. I've never seen a game, so it's not based on anything being wrong, but I just want an opportunity to be engaged in what it is from soup to nuts. And then I'm looking forward to just the excitement of getting our people together. And I know they are too, and so we have to deliver on that. And so um, I will definitely write that down, but that's something we've already discussed uh, of having an open opportunity. You know, I'm, I'm Gotta realize I'm from Kentucky where I've had big blue madness and we had like the first practice is the end of the world. So they'll have to calm me down about what we do. And I've heard we've done some big things and we, I think we call it blue madness in the past. And so uh, we'll see where we go with some of these things. And uh, I won't, I, you know, not just the open practices or exhibition games or the scrimmages. I want to get to a point where our game days are the ones that, the celebrities in town want to go to because that's the place you need to be. I wanted to be where the business, the young business guy wants to be. I need to get court size seats because I need to get in the room with a bunch of other people that I want to inspire to be one day. But also we're all there cheering on the blue demons to victory. And that's what I dream about. And so all those things stay connected. You know, I love hearing from our fans. So, you know, I know I have my email on the website. If you need to send me something, um, but, you know, obviously you can connect with me on social media. I'm available as well. And I've responded back to some people that have had some pretty daunting questions. And so, you know, I'm not running from it. I know it's a tough task. It's part of the job. Um, but we all are in this because of these young people. The fans wouldn't have anything to cheer on. And I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for these young people. And so that's why we're so student athlete focused. And I'm looking forward to having a whole bunch of fun this fall. Well, this hour has flown by. I can't believe um, it's almost 6.30 here. So this will be our last question for the evening. Um, how can those watching today that want to get involved help? Well, I'll restate what I talked about before. The first thing you can do is be a season ticket holder. That's the foundation of what you do. We have one revenue producing sport that means basketball. But we're dedicated to pushing men and women's basketball at Wintrust Arena with the combined campaign, and we need you to commit to us. That's the first step. I'm gonna commit, because I wanna see DePaul University, I wanna see DePaul Athletics get back to the way it used to be. And if you can commit to being a season ticket holder for men and women's basketball, that's gonna help all 15 sports. That's gonna help our university, your university. That's gonna help Chicago. That's the first thing you need to do. And then, based on where you are, your livelihood, your professional career, what your family can give, it's time to step up. We need it to give because if we want to be one of those programs, if we want to be a real Big East program, a blue blood, then what that's going to take support. And I've asked our alums to be ambassadors for this program. Proudly wear your DePaul Blue Demon gear. And if you don't have some, we're going to get you some. We're going to have more available for our fans to wear because they need to be the, I mean, they can't wear jerseys. They can't buy jerseys. We got to do our part. And so as we do these things this off season, we need your commitment. 
Invest in us. Invest in your Blue Demon family. We will give you return on that investment. I promise you. And as we're taking the steps to grow, believe me, there's progress being made and you will see the results of the work that we put into these 10 months. And I just wanna thank you for spending this time with us, an hour of your time. It won't go unnoticed. And I can't wait to meet all our season ticket holders, the new ones, the old, we're not gonna be like some of the, the deals you go out there where we're only gonna give the good stuff to the new people. No, we're gonna take care of our loyal people too. First and foremost, because you didn't, you didn't let go of the rope. But for those that want to re-grasp it or just try it for the first time, we need your help. Chicago needs you. DePaul University needs you. I need you to succeed too. And so I can't wait to see everybody this fall. But be on the lookout for news, notes, and ways to support and donate and buy season tickets to DePaul. Thank you, Emily. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, first and foremost, for all you do for our student athletes and for our DePaul community. Um, and of course, thank you for spending an hour with us this evening um, in what I'm sure is a, a very busy schedule. So thank you so much. And um, to everyone who joined us tonight, thank you all for spending an hour with us, um, getting excited about to Paul Athletics and, and the future and everything we have going on. So um, we will wrap it up for this night. Thank you and have a great night, everyone. Go Blue Demons. <laughs>